Hill. This is Paul from Drums and Rums, where the backbeats meets the spirits, continuing our Maze podcast series on percussion manufacturers. Today's guests are musicians and veterans who own and operate our feature company. This vision started back in 2008 in the pursuit to make a more durable drumstick. Let me welcome to the podcast owners, Dan Anderson and Doug Smitty Smith. And also, thank you for your service. So how are you guys doing tonight? Not too bad. And how about yourself? I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing really well. Uh, and again, appreciate the uh, you know, you guys accepting the invite to come on. I really was had this idea of want to hear stories from companies that make percussion instruments. You know, it's again, it's great to talk to drummers and but in this whole world of the drums and rums craziness that some people just don't understand how do these two things fit together. I thought it was a very interesting topic to, um, you know, to talk to folks that are, you know, the little companies, the independent companies and, you know, how they're up against some of the big guys. And, uh, and, and I was just on another podcast, another company that'll be part of the series that I said, you know, I said, there's a lot of similarities that I see where it's very much like craft spirits. You know, here you see behind me, there's bottles on the, on the wall where there's mom and pops and the little companies and they're up against the big, the big rum companies as well. And, you know, they're plugging along and they're very proud of their products. It's craft, it's hand, you know, and, uh, you know, and there's a lot more attention to detail and some of this stuff. And I said, you know, there's a lot of companies very similarly out there that are like that too. So, um, so yeah, it really interesting to, you know, hear the story uh, again, want to definitely first off give a huge shout out to, uh, Rick Bacata and, and Angel Bacata here, uh, our drummer Angel there, a past guest, or also what we call our, um, um, a part of the alum, I guess we would call it that. So once you go through the show and we get the pain of the the uh, rapid fire segment, you become part of the alums and and so forth. So uh, so we'll go we'll go into so so let's start off here. Okay, so we I think we all know. Um, obviously, if you were if you were a, if a stick drum back up here a percussion company i don't want to just say your stick company because um, there's more to you guys than just that but obviously if you're you know a percussion manufacturing company obviously you play the drum right so <laughs> i think that's a given right, right? <laughs> so um so how did this all start out from a cnc machine in you know in your mom's kitchen and um and and how how did you learn how to make drumsticks? I guess where where is that? Let's start. Let's start from the beginning. Here is from from there. Sure. Um, well, to tell you the truth, that really was the beginning. I I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just had a eager dream to put the engineering and manufacturing behind something that I loved, and I've played drums my whole life, so. You know, uh, I was done playing professionally. Uh, and once I was done doing the playing live gigs and doing all of that, you know, I was I was right at the pinnacle point in life for me that I found, you know, what now? You know, it's we're done with high school. We're done with being in bands and doing all of that stuff. We have to be somewhat serious about what we want to do. But I was really in love with drums. Uh, I, initially, I thought, it would be a slick idea to start building drums themselves. Uh, again, a lot of people do that. Mm. So it was costly with the hardware and all that fun stuff. So it wasn't really necessarily something I could afford to get into right out of the gate. Uh, but I had one sweet little credit card with $3,000 on it. And I knew that that was my budget of what I could do. And, uh, so if I wasn't going to do drums, I was going to build something along those lines. Uh, drumsticks was the next idea. Mm. So initially, I looked into getting sticks from another manufacturer, obviously, and rebranding them myself, uh, and seeing if you know that was even something that was worth testing out, just with the guys that I already knew within the circles of all the drummers I already worked with, and uh, so forth. So I, uh, I took that money and I spent $1,500 and bought a whole bunch of drumsticks from this other company. Uh, they're one of the lead manufacturers for secondhand manufacturing for other people. And uh, I tested the idea with, with the local drummers and the other people that I, I currently worked with. And 
you know, whether it was the fact that they knew me and they were just trying to help support me and what I was doing or, you know, whatever it was, but it, it took off. And a lot of the guys liked what we had going on, but a lot of people were asking for everything, but when I had built, uh, <laughs> So of course, they still you know, are. <laughs> yeah, ain't that a story? Uh, so, you know, uh, I ate a lot of the common models, five B acorn at sixteen inches, stuff like that. That's like one of the most common built sticks that everybody likes. But uh, you know, they didn't have oval, and I didn't have this, and I didn't have that. So, you know, the only way I could think about getting around that was making it myself. Of course, that was kind of crazy, but you know, uh, I found that CNC and I found that C little CNC company. And I was like, okay, I had $1,500 left over plus the $2,200 that I had made from buying and selling the first row of sticks. And I took that and I, and I bought a CNC that came with a little computer and, and the little works and it was cool but I knew nothing about making CNC code or any of that stuff. I just figured it would be something that it was simple enough that I could totally, I could figure it out. It was, it was either going this way or it was going this way. X, Y, X, Y, Z, right? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So uh, it was, um, it was a, an operating system that was relatively, uh, I don't know, layman's terms to understand. I mean, it was just super basic, simple layout. And uh, so I did, I figured it out. And um, I found out who was supplying dowels to, well, basically everybody right now, uh, with the exception of uh, some people. And there, it's a hickory supply dowel manufacturer supply, you know, sp- 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 yep. not that specific for <laughs> drumsticks because it's a certain type of it's a certain type of uh mm. wood wood okay so i apologize i keep i keep putting those in and then all these other programs show up on my thing so no um, it's okay so anyways so, yeah no so so dan i think um thinking through so that machine and again obviously you had that idea to to seek out and and thus um i mean did you did did you envision that this was this is what you where you want it to be or was it just out of a necessity slash start it out maybe as a hobby or and and before even all of that is it just something that you already kind of knew had a little bit of manufacturing background or shop class or whatever you want to call it or was just a hey i want to make sticks because there's nothing out there that works or i can make it better and let me figure out. I have an idea and I'll figure it out along the way. Honestly. Um, no, I, I didn't have, I mean, I knew how to work on my car and like change my oil and stuff and simple like mechanics and shop like that. But uh, in terms of like working with chop saws and table saws and power tools and CNC's and all of that stuff, like I had never, ever done it before yeah. at all. So, the the crazy thing is is that dance from Chicago and in Chicago they make things. And uh if you notice how many drum manufacturers are in Chicago, there's a lot. And uh, Dan is an engineer in his heart and uh he likes to make stuff. And he likes to make stuff better. And uh he just happened to make one of the greatest drumsticks on the planet. Yeah. So so that's so that's definitely you again. You, you you'll like i said you you had this drive this passion and and said i'll figure it out and this is what that passion kept kept moving you forward that you weren't you know there was probably sure ups and downs and 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 kind of as you mentioned put yourself a little bit into debt there to pursue and keep going further and uh hey hats off and to 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 keep being persistent with this uh vision to and, and so forth right you look back i mean do you ever look back and say damn w- w- you know 2008 so what are we i don't know whatever the whatever the math is 14 i don't know I, 14 smackaroos right and say <laughs> wow look look at where this 
came from. You know, that's why I, I, I always look at like Facebook memories. Like, oh my God, that was 10 years ago kind of thing. I mean, do you ever have that whole thought? Oh, too? right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, Facebook does that to me all the time. They, they give you the, you know, here's what it was five years ago, or here's what it was 10 years ago. But um, yeah, I, I, I think about that quite often. And Doug and I have a, have a conference call every week. And, you know, it's like, I get off the phone just thinking about that every time, you know, cause we're one step forward every week. So uh, even every week it's, it's, it's progress. It's great progress. And, and, uh, and it's very much like, I think about the past all the time, not in a reflection of like, I miss it, but in the fact that it, it fuels me going forward because I never conceived this like, and this is not even, you know, this is not even like, woo, this is great. You know, we're really enjoying ourselves and, and we're, we're definitely building a great brand, but uh, yeah, no, I never, I never thought it would get to uh, this point. Cool. So how did, sure. Yeah. So how did, how did you, how did you guys, all right. So, you know, how'd you cross paths in 2017? I think I've read a little something that you, you know, as you mentioned there, uh, Doug, that, you know, there was, you know, people that are making percussion stuff in Chicago. And, and I think something about, you know, the word got out that you were making sticks and, and, you know, and it very much, it, and that's great. It, it, the word of mouth, you can't, you can't beat that. And people knew, knew you were somebody. So, yeah. Uh, well, so I'm in a metal band, man. I play bass in a band called core, uh, Q U O R like liquor without the L I kind of like the drums and rums thing, you know? Yeah, and we're, and we're, and, and Doug, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get to that too. Cause I want to talk to you a little bit about that. If you don't mind so, Maybe a little bit. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love talking about my band shamelessly self promoting myself all the time. Don't care. You know? And, uh, uh, you know, we go on tour, we did a national run. We did like a three week tour had like 18 shows in 21 days or something crazy played in Tallahassee. And then, uh, we went to Michigan and when we were coming back through Chicago, my drummer at the time, John Cordes, he's like, Hey guys, like, you guys want to stop in and check out the shop where my drum sticks are made. And I got a carpenter's heart, you know, I've been building stuff my entire life and remodeling houses and kitchens and build a house from scratch. Like I love the aspect of woodworking. So I was like, yeah, let's go do that. And, um, you know, we like to do stuff when we have days off, um, or extra time. And we had a day off that weekend. So we, we ran over and met Dan and, uh, you know, Dan was super gracious, man, as he always is, and accepted us into the warehouse and toured us around and, like, didn't hold anything back, man. It showed us the whole thing, and and uh, I think we got to make our own while we were in there. You know, we always do that in the shop when people come in. Oh, cool. And uh, uh, at that time, and still currently, I work for a company called Dirtbag Clothing, and part of that artist endorsement program is we have this program that we've developed called TSE, Tour Support Equipment where over the years we've developed relationships with manufacturers to get uh, kind of like a marketing team, like a third party marketing team where we have a, a roster of artists that all are looking for good gear. And, you know, for using dirt bag, they get a little discount and the, the company gets a sale and we make a little big and it kind of works out for everybody. So when we went to the shop, I had that in the back of my head and I thought Scorpion would be perfect for that. Seeing how Dan was a one man pony with, with his, I mean, dude, his mom has put in thousands of hours into this, and this is a family affair. Uh, very small, very grassroots. It doesn't get as American and like awesome as that. And uh, you know, a lot of people have put time into it. So I was like, man, this is amazing. This is exactly who I want to work with. And uh, you know, the idea behind the, the sticks is amazing. And you know, putting out good quality product. I'm a number one fan of that. And uh, so we started talking about getting Scorpion enrolled with that and, and did over a year or so. And then, and then it kind of just blossomed into this crazy thing that it is now. Now that's, so that that's pretty cool to see where there's some partnership and then, you know, and, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those uh, artist support that, you know, that you guys have with uh, Scorpion. And, but obviously, as you mentioned, Doug was the opportunity to very similarly, you know, there's oh you got to be so creative nowadays and how you you know promote and get the word out there and do different things that you know the, the traditional non-traditional way but it's a new tradition like you know for somebody my age you know we look back probably 10 years ago when everyone was youtubing it's like what's this youtube thing and you know shit now people make a make a career out of youtube content creation and it's a different a diff, totally different thing so 
Um, I mean, it's interesting that, yeah, you, you saw something there and, you know, obviously you struck it up. And so that was about what, 20, you said 2017, 2018. And that's, that's cool to be able to walk in there and, you know, and get a tour and then be able to make your own stuff. Cause I saw a video where that machine, or again, one of the machines that, you know, maybe you guys, you talk a little bit, but that, that one machine. So, I mean, that thing looks like that thing just totally is zipping through cutting and forming that stick from that dowel, which it was like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty fast. And, um, and yeah, we can then talk about how, you know, you guys turn, turn around some of those sticks that are made and, uh, and time frame. So, um, I know I've got some that are in the mail. I've got my tracking order. So, uh, so I will uh, give you my uh, feedback on uh, trying them out. So I did get two different. Love that. So, yeah. So, um, thank you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've known about you guys for a while and again, had followed and, and obviously, you know, um, be, probably became very aware of it from, uh, Angel, uh, when she came on the podcast, I think last, last year, March, was she, she came on and I think about right about yeah. that time, I think she became uh, one of your artists. And, uh, um, again, I was like, well, I said, let me, let me try some things out. I'm having been playing lately as much because it's just been crazy doing this stuff. And then I was just talking to another alum myrna uh drum vicious myrna and she's in colorado and she's a, a metal drummer and um and i said you know i said yeah i said i said my guests help inspire me and i hope obviously this community crazy community as it is help inspire each other and make a connection that may not be reaching out to folks that are uh in the typical the typical mold of maybe in the certain circles right again there's a lot of cross-pollination so so then from there uh Doug, you guys then kind of took, you know, expanded or, or kind of took it, you know, took the company bigger, or, I mean, I guess how, how, it, how, how are you both owners of it? I guess that, I guess that's that question. You know, is that really where the company started as what it's known today? Uh, well, so, the, so he had uh, come and made that tour, right. Mm-hmm. And we initially kicked off our dirtbag clothing idea and we started working together, but as the business grew more and more, uh, Doug and I had, become closer and closer and, and the more and more he was interested in, in getting involved with, with the business on more of a, a, a personal side. So we had gotten to an agreement where we are equal share owners and we work together just as such. And and right now we had moved things out to San Diego where the production is being handled now uh, because it was too much to handle within the Chicago facility. Okay. And and we just grew, man, like it, you know, the struggle is real for small businesses and, uh, you know, for something that you get 14 years of your life to, uh, every day you wake up and it's there and, uh, the weight is heavy. And, uh, if you don't have good people and you don't, or maybe not have anybody just because you don't have anybody, I mean, there's a thousand reasons why things happen. And, uh, you know, Dan loves it so much. He gives it, he does what he does and he just hits it head on and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. And, and, uh, you know, we got to pick that run up and build the snowball as we all know, and marketing and business development, it, you, you, you push the ball of snow around and it gets, hopefully it gets bigger and the weather stays cool. So it doesn't melt. And, and then, you know, it's next thing you know, the snowball's four feet wide and you can't push that thing by yourself anymore. <laughs> like it's just, you you need people and yeah, um, absolutely iconic. Kind of I mean, no matter what, it, you know. Yeah, he was he's like spot it's, on with it. It's that, and in the in the type of manufacturing that we were doing before that Dan was doing, you know, we've we've changed the way that we make the product four or five times over the last fourteen years, and and three or four year increments. You know, every couple of years something would change. Dan would figure it out. It would get a little bit better. Get a little bit easier get a bit more defined, like the process would get refined a little bit, you know, and then, and then volume comes in and the gas pedal, the metaphorical gas pedal gets pushed down and more orders come in. We start talking about it more drummers start talking about it more. Shout out to all of you scorpions. I love you. Uh, the our artists, man, they know how to talk. They, they, they know when they have a good product, they talk about it frequently. Uh, it's one of the most number one reasons we sell the sticks we do is from word of mouth of drummers. And uh, we acknowledge that publicly, you know, like we're grateful for it and, uh, you know, but more, more business, more problems. And uh, so then, you know, what, four or five years ago, I kind of, we start talking and coming along and and realize that, you know, Dan is using the machine. That's that machine that you're referring to is called a back knife lathe. 
And, you know, in the last hundred years, there's really two ways to make a drumstick on a, on a commercial level. And one is a back knife lathe. I think Vader has those and like Zildjian or something. Uh, and I also believe uh, Los Cabos uses a black knife, back knife lathe. Yep. They're great. Yep. They work. They're consistent. Uh, that's why people use them. That's why these companies use them. You know, Vader's got like 10 of them. Um, but then you have companies like Promark and McFirth, and they use a thing called a grinder. And there's a lot of drummers out there that may or may not know that this is how these are made. But a grinding machine is like a stone wheel that is cast based on certain specifications. And then the doll goes in and it just, it, it can do th thousands of these things quickly and within very small tolerances. Mm -hmm. So we had this opportunity at the time to either keep doing the sticks in house and, and, and running all the machinery and the warehouse and all the things, or, moving over to somebody who could actually produce the dolls that we need on a consistent basis and alleviate a big portion of the labor of, of what it takes to do this. Um, so we found a supplier and uh, it's a grinder and it produces a better quality doll. The, the, the stones are cast out of our specifications, uh, you know, heavier dolls, medium tapers, big fat BB tips to displace all that impact from you guys shredding your asses off. And uh you know, we have a, a great drumstick. And, um, you know, over the last five years, we've done nothing but refine and reintegrate. And we take our QC very seriously. You know, we sort three times tighter than anybody else does. We're literally counting the sticks, man. Like we count every doll, every doll by hand. Every stick is checked for warpage, cross grain. I mean, it gets endless. Uh, you, a company cannot possibly put a drumstick commercially available through more scrutiny than we do so and um yeah so that's uh sorry don't mean to cut you off though but i think that's a, a great a great segue into you know some of the products and again your two series right you have two primary or the or not primary but two series period right and yep. uh you know what's really interesting is you know the immortal series and then the rehearsal and um <clears throat> so I, I i think that's kind of interesting where so it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the immortals, the 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 premium, the as you as you said, the QC high quality uh, stick, and then the rehearsal is basically the same stick. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the same stick, but maybe there's some something that wouldn't make necessary your standard of what would move it to you know prime choice. You know, grade A, if you want to call it that, you know, maybe it's because I'm hungry. I'm using a food reference. Immortal but, series. Yeah. And the so, immortal standard. <laughs> so, yeah, is, but you're forever. You're spot on. Okay. You're spot on with it. Yeah, dude. Cool. So, yeah. The, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. The immortal uh, series, uh, it, it, you know, as you noticed, has the option of length and finish, you know, choices where the rehearsal series, we've left it to, the most common stick that people buy is a 16 inch stick. So, you know, as you'd go to the store and you would go get bags of sticks, you know, and that's, that's like the most common bought stick is those bags of sticks that they were putting out for a long while is a, uh, is 16 inch. So we just figured we would take a rehearsal series and, you know, we've got the option of, of tip within multiple diameters. So, you know, that's a step ahead of what everybody was doing with their uh, bag of sticks and that's kind of the option. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's got some kind of a defect in the finish or whatever it is, but it doesn't have the option of multiple finishes or multiple lengths. So, so is that then, I, I guess then once, once it goes through that final review QA process and, and even talk about for the, for like, again, those who are not drummers who may be listening to this or those that may not know, there is a, um, a pair of sticks come in, or at least as far as I understand. So again, you guys are the, you guys make this, you make sticks. So you, you tell me, um, but it's a, a pair of sticks is part of a balanced set, right? A, a two sticks that either, whether it's came from the same piece of wood or, or something to that effect. Right. So is yeah, we're, rehearsals we're looking for the same, same tonal characteristics and the same weight characteristics. Okay. So what, you know, once you've got that, those two balances, you're in great shape. So could you have, could you have a, a set that may be, you know, one's one doesn't quite make it the cut and, but maybe the other one does, or really, 
I guess it does not matter at the at the end when a big pile of sticks roll off the assembly line you usually go through and you yeah. know if you got if you got ten 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 sets of sticks, but yet maybe seven of them make it, you know, I guess you get three extras. So I don't know. I mean anyway, so maybe I'm getting too crazy into the weeds there, but no, I'll, I'll give you a rundown. So uh, we produced a big batch. We've got uh, 288. Let's give it 288 pairs. Okay. So what we'll do is we've got uh, four boxes of 288. We go through those boxes. We weight sort each stick. We tone sort each stick. And uh, we grain sort each stick. So, you know, we sort them by those variables right there, like right out of the gate. So you'll have all of these pairs that'll be the same tone because we already know that the entire batch is pre-calculated. So the weight is already there. The length is already there. And now we just have to worry about the tones being correct and the weights being correct. So then we'll pair them up at the end and that's it. You'll be ready to go. You don't, you can't do, um, you know, producing pairs together until the very, very last step. You sleeve them and you ship them out. The pitch changes on a doll with any physical abuse to the doll. So if we uh, run the doll through a sander to create a natural finish, that changes the pitch. If we dip the doll in our venom grip, the neon green grip that you may have seen, that will change the pitch a little bit. And the heavier the dolls or the longer the dolls, the, the pitch will change based on that too. And uh, at the end, like Dan said, we literally sit there and bang sticks together and listen for the pitch by with a human ear mm-hmm. after they've been pitch sorted with machines and all the things. And uh, we do all the little extra steps that the big companies can't do because it's not commercially viable for them to do that. And uh, for them, it would create a lot of waste. So, you know, we get really good at selling one thing really well and selling the best that we can sell. Yeah, I, and again, like you said, it's... Uh... You, you as as a as a small company you're trying to maximize every piece of uh product uh material etc that you're not just going to maybe just throw it in the you know in the garbage or but at least kind of at least still get something out of it or or, or whatnot and uh yeah, yeah i mean absolutely. yeah and as I, I guess it's a great way to to kind of describe is as in on the website that says explains you know ideas on the, you know the immortal versus the rehearsal and maybe it's something that yeah you, you want to just give away at it's a little lower price it's basically the same stick but it's something that you you know hand give away signatures or whatever you want to call it and you know still you still you know it's still a scorpion stick but uh something that well to tell you the truth you know like as a drummer yourself i'm sure you've you know you've gone to the store and, and at least bought a bag of sticks that they had in the bin yeah. at some point you know and uh and, and used them and played them and and used them at rehearsal or used them at gigs or whatever it was, you know, and it's like the, the rehearsal series is built just the same, you know, if it's got a mineral streak in it or, or poor grain structure, it's still a really good stick to use and, and go play, you know, rehearsal with it. We just wouldn't recommend when you're going to play a professional live performance where your performance is on the line that you don't want to break a stick for sure you'd rather use an immortal to get through yourself through the gig rather than using a rehearsal and have the possibility of it shredding on you all right yeah and, and as like you said the big the, the big bag of sticks and you know yeah this is this was i was trying to include some of the giveaways that i've got in you know obviously for for, for the fans or the group you know the uh, facebook group that we have where we do a monthly giveaway and you know one of them i'll throw in a pair of sticks again this is the, you know the cheapy amazon uh pair of sticks you know and uh you know, basically, right yeah. I mean, it, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah. take care of you, man. Don't you worry about that. Okay, yeah, oh, we, yeah. We, yeah, we've, I've, I've, like I said, again, I'm, I'm into open to a lot of crazy ideas, promotions. I mean, shit. I mean, I've talked to a local company here in Florida. Uh, this idea, maybe it's a little bit of a, uh, uh, what's the, what's the word I want to, you know, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the word I want to use, but, uh, maybe an ego, not an ego thing, but w- whatever it is like that would be really cool if I had my own, my own rum. Right. And again, I've talked to actually talked to somebody how to proceed and he goes, well, maybe you kind of you make a little bit difference at it if you call it, you know, if it's drums and rums, drums and rums rum or whatever you want to call it is maybe the I don't want to say gimmicky in a bad way, but 
perfect. It, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I thought it was great. Here's, yeah, here's it's great name. Like, like here's a bottle, right? Here's 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 my <laughs> bottle of rum, and in every bottle there's a pair of sticks, you know, that's part of the you know the whole. Dude, that's some slick shit. Yeah, so it's uh, I don't know. Yeah, we can get. Yeah, we can definitely talk offline. You know, we don't want to give it all away, all the secrets away, right? You know, so um, Ooh. so we'll yeah, well let's talk. Yeah, so um, as you probably see, some of the crazy things I do post, and I, and I do need to get back into. A lot of people say. We don't see you posting a lot of drums. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm uh, like I said, I was just talking to uh, Dr- Drum Bishop Murder about that earlier. I said, well, I said I'm once things start settling in, I need to get back into posting more drum stuff. I'm I, unfortunately it seems like I'm drinking a lot more than I am. I'm rumming a lot more than I am drumming. <laughs> You're a drum drummer, <laughs> not a drummer brother. Yeah. Drum drummer. <laughs> <laughs> so yes i i've had some ideas and somebody say why don't you play the drums while you're drinking rum or making cocktails yes. i'm like i said i could do it i said if i bought a cocktail kit or if somebody if somebody hey if somebody wants to give me a cocktail kit i'd be happy to and um actually and that's kind of kind of a, a kind of interesting thing to kind of uh, again content creation promotion in different kind of forms right that who else is do- like a lot the other night I, I i i took one of our these these are cocktails in a can they're rum based hard seltzers basically seven and a half percent and there's made here in florida a uh, great company uh again uh mom pop kind of deal um you know small company trying to claw against a white claw and no pun intended there but you know i i made a post of something there was i smoked with my smoker you know this cell they, it's a cocktail in a can i know they don't want to you know, say it, it's not a seltzer right but this product and i smoked it and i'm like who's smoking you know, basically hard seltzers. Right. And so it's a little, it's, I don't know. It's crazy shit that it's like, who does this shit. Right. But anyway, so I'm sure again, some of the stuff you guys do, it's like to help differentiate and kind of step outside, not be this follow the norm. So, um, so yeah, l- let's get back to the sticks now. So, um, okay. So you've got the immortal and the rehearsal series. And I mean, how can you offer now? This is this, when I read this, I was like, good Lord. Okay. There's, there's, it's almost in crazy to think that you guys can offer 125 different options. I mean, how how is that possible? Because that seems like <laughs> no company has that many different variations of a product to, to kind of keep track of. So there you go. So there you go. Let's hear it. We, we worked our way into it. You know? It yeah. wasn't like a, well, you know, go zero to 125. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it just comes down to the simplicity of production and making things easier for ourselves than, you know, harder. And a lot of the companies, uh, will produce products based on, you know, uh, literally artists building different specifications based on what they think that they hear and feel. And I, I respect that. That's fantastic. You know, uh, if that's how they want to lead their their trains, but um, I'm more on a directive where uh, I'm a drummer. So uh, I I know what the variables are out there. You know, uh, the only thing that we're missing right now in terms of tips is a nylon tip. And uh, we hear about it all the time. Thank you. We love you guys. (laughs) Yes, we love you very much. We're so grateful for your guys' interest. But now that I've got you here, listen closely. Buy the ball tip. Just buy it. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, so, you know, um, I went with the most balanced stick that I could produce. That was that was the key in, in where some of the dimensions come from. You know, uh, I'll be completely honest. The balance of the tip being as abnormally large as the tip is right now wasn't necessarily in the design. I'll tell you that. Um, but it worked itself out perfectly. Uh, but the, the variable of options is that the simplicity of what I was doing when I was cutting with a back knife lathe was this. The back knives were extremely expensive, like like crazy expensive for the tooling. <sighs> so, uh, like enough that I had to borrow, borrow money from my mom. So uh, I could only produce one stick length and I had to cut the stick down in order to get the the smaller lengths you know 16 16 and a half and i was like why don't i just make everything at 17 and cut it down because you know 
16 is common, but what if people want 16 and a half or a quarter or any of that funky stuff? So right. uh, I got three knives made and everything was 17 inches and I got one of each tip, ball tip, acorn tip, and oval tip. The only three tips you actually need. Need. And uh, I, just, I just gave the option of, of just cutting it down from there because you know uh there was plenty of guys that wanted 17s but 99 percent was 16 and then you'd get the 16 and a half guys well, i was doing quarters for a while but the 16 and a half so right now uh you know that gives us that option right there three tips five different diameters and three different lengths so it sounds like it sounds like you're you're you're, you're I'm going to just believe you because I don't want to do math again in my head here is that that's like this times, this times, this combination is 125. <laughs> oh yeah. I, for, I forgot. 15, I forgot. That math like was totally 15, wrong. 15 plus the finishes. Times, oh, yeah. Okay. Three finishes times three lengths times three pips. All right. Ew. So, Ew. See, see that, see that kids, this is why, this is why, you know, you think you never need to learn algebra in school. And this is why because down the road, you're going to be on a podcast. Yeah, Cause you can nerd out like me and, and just come up with all these crazy combinations that really do it. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So, um, so what, it, what did you guys say was the sticks were made out of? Was it, um, you said it was a hickory. American yes. weapon grade hickory. Okay. Yep. We use uh, all Tennessee Appalachia hickory. Okay. So it's good. Um, and I know most. I know most spirits are aged in, in oak barrels, and or and I think there might be some that are. So so ho hopefully we're not competing over the same. So plant plant a tree. So we have you know barrels to age rum in, and also to make sticks, right? So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we um, uh, we actually when we partnered with this company in order to help us reduce the production of what we were looking for uh, are one of the, the key elements to it was the fact that they were supplying themselves. They weren't creating, you know, deforestation and, and causing all these issues. They were planting trees and, and really harvesting their own forest. And uh, it takes a really long time for a hickory tree to grow. And, you know, so for the fact that they were willing to get themselves involved with that, and uh, we knew that we were also taking a part in that and, and wasn't helping, was not helping the deforestation uh, was great. Plus, you know, when you get to working with a company that does everything from scratch, uh, you have a far better yield and quality control, let's say, from, from the very start. And that was just like, that, that was just far none. You know, we, we couldn't even compete with that. When, right. like no matter what like we could have went to the store and got our own grinders and like did everything but when it comes down to wood source being as quality as we have the option to have right now uh so you know so how many how many do you do you know roughly how many when they cut a tree that how many i guess sticks could be produced from one tree that gets harvested or to make the dowels and, and so forth. I mean, do you guys have, you know, an idea, you know, this one yeah, oak tree that gets it, cut down is a thousand sticks or something like that. Yeah. The, uh, the, the hickory trees that we, that we use are a very specific type and we only get about 14% of that tree as far as, you know, for, for value of drumstick making. So, uh, and then when we get through our end selection sort, not that all the wood doesn't get used, and this is exactly why we're doing exactly what we're doing right now, uh, but that is the selection sort process that they get out of that tree is only 14%. And then we sort that from there to down to roughly, I don't know, five to 4% of, of what they get from that. And then we sort it down once it gets into into the house uh, in order to pare that down. Wow! So, but the tree gets used for other things too. Okay, uh, hundred percent. You know, only fourteen percent of the trees for drumsticks. The rest of the tree gets for furniture and other. whatever else they use for. Yeah. Okay. So it is. Yeah, that's why. That's why I was thinking. I'm like, wow, that's that's not a whole lot. 
that is yield from, oh, from yeah. right? You know, it sounds it sounds like wow, no. there's a lot of there's a lot of cutting it, you know, using a tree that's ends up getting, you know, not used. But yeah, that makes sense is to under again, it's like anything else. In context, you gotta understand the whole context is and I'm glad you kind of uh Doug just kind of made that clarification that yeah, it may seem small, but it isn't like the whole tree is goes to waste um for you know the other portions of it that again like you said you know you're not you're not throwing you're not throwing things away you're you're trying to repurpose them as, as much as you can and, and so forth so yeah actually every step along the way like from the lumber mill to to the everything man to the macro manufacturing to the micro to us to like it's all everybody along the way does their best to not waste anything yeah and uh you know um even if it means taking a hit monetarily you know we all are here in america getting paid and yeah and we have a responsibility too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, again, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to maximize everything and, and not waste. And I think that's something that's probably gotten better over time. People, under, you know, understand that better in, when it comes to manufacturing and obviously mm -hmm. it's something like, um, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't think we need to go down this rabbit hole, but, um, like how manufacturing has looked a little different now with 3d printing, you know, you're, you're not removing material when you're building something you're now building up but again in this case here it is a little different you know because wood you know there's no 3d printer that prints <laughs> print liquid wood or whatever you want to call it so actually yeah, yeah so right. we i've got i've got a 3d a little you know hobby 3d printer and you know i was my son finally taught me how to use it and again here's a gen x here's a gen x or i happen to ask my gen z son to show me how to do it it's like you know but uh Again, this is why I thought it was fascinating this whole manufacturing series percussion. But you know, I got a chance to at least print out something here in uh oh, in three D. Awesome. So so again I have a, I do have a CAD background and uh so I've, I've now now that I have the software and I kinda of know how to use it a little bit, I'm probably gonna go into a, a tear here and try to come up with some things or even you know, I know like in this case your prototyping is a is a huge uh, huge thing that three D printers can do, but um, so, so back, back to, uh, yeah. So back to some of that equipment there you were talking about was the, the back, back blade. Is that, did I say that right? Or, and or, uh, the back knife blade, back knife. And then yeah. also some of that, cause, um, yeah, I, I, I used to work, I used to work when in, in my er, late teens in a tool room and, you know, again, some somewhat familiar around some of those machines and, and so forth. And, and again, a previous guest we just had on, uh, Nick, Nick, uh, from Nicky Moon symbols, you know, and he talks about that process of using the lathes to shape, you know, and, and tr you know, and manufacture symbols, and uh, sure. uh, it's kind of kind of very interesting how uh, that process of, you know, taking down the the metal in his case, you know, you, uh, you guys I absolutely would... love it. I, I would nerd out watching the the Zildjian videos that they had on YouTube on, on how how products are made. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've watched the drumstick videos. Yeah. I have a, a uh, like a, a favorite video and it's every other manufacturer's videos, whether it's Zildjian making symbols, Sabian, other stick manufacturers, lathes and running. I mean, I just nerd out about it. I can't help it. So, yeah, I was, that's what I was going to, I was going to ask because, you know, on the website there was like, okay, I saw that some of your social media included TikTok and I'm like, all right, which one of you guys are doing the dances on TikTok? But obviously I see... <laughs> So oh, you 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 admit it you admit it, Doug. You're doing all the. Uh... Dan, Dan only dances on Saturday nights. Oh, okay. It, which yeah, club, which club? You better pay me good. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I was gonna ask which which club is he at? <laughs> Short and thick, right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, no, but but some of that it's funny is those uh, you know some of those TikTok videos that people post where they're making something and you're watching a time lapse or it's sped up where it's like the the diy guy or, or whatever that they're actually filming creating and building something or how the guys mm. you know and i don't know maybe it's an idea that you know you kind of make some of those things because people love just to watch in slow motion cleaning videos are like That's for sure. you know so um I, i've posted some things where my uh folks has a, a, an embroidery company and you know i've just videotape is the machine embroidering you know some of the stuff that i have uh for the drums and yeah. drums and you know kind of people wa is fascinated watching some of that things getting created you know so yes yeah love that stuff so love it so yeah so um 
is as you mentioned your growth and the snowball reference and and so forth and yeah so it sounds like so with the growth of the company over that time period that you guys talked about how, how many how many employees are you up to now one okay and he's a 1099 contractor we don't okay. have any employees at Scorpion okay. percussion we have contractors okay got it so it means they're responsible for their own safety <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, we have a qualification thing where people run the shop and we watch and make sure they don't cut their fingers off and do stuff. And, uh, you know, and make sure they can fulfill the package correctly. Right. So, I mean, so, re- so, but it, it employees versus, yeah, I, I, I get it is, but you know, you've, you've kind of grown past just the two of you is and, 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 and your, and your mom, right. Is now it's more than just the three of you, right. Pretty much. Well, so that was, that was the next evolution in our production. It was, do we go to the do we go to the route where we hire a whole bunch of employees and do all of this like the way that everybody else does it or do we take it to the degree where we can make it easier on ourselves in the next evolution of of mass production and keeping the quality where we needed it and so when we had the opportunity to switch over to grinders and uh and stuff like that that took an immediate huge huge weight off of needing so much hands-on work to do the to the do the production of the stick making and now we can just focus on the back-end detail stuff of you know uh quality control being the number one thing that we get to spend the most time on and uh and customizing and finishing to specifications whether it's lengths or finish changing building your signatures dipping on all that kind of stuff so now now our next steps with what we're doing is is continuing with uh the next step is automation and robotics and uh that's what we're working on now cool yeah that one that one video i watched it looked like it was pretty pretty much you know there's some automation there where it was you know like almost like a chamber for a a gun and a bullet where it loaded in and then (laughs) it just you know and and trim you know trimmed it on down yeah yeah that was a that was a great machine Mm-hmm. The automation that we, you know, we t- we're talking about production, but, uh, you know, the other half of this business is customer service mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, two biggest complaints from drummers when they're, when they're complaining about things is number one, my sticks break too fast. And number two, they don't answer my emails mm-hmm. and, uh, they don't call me and they don't talk to me and I don't feel like I'm an artist to them, you know, even though I'm supposed to be. So we, you know, we created the app too. And, uh, the app that nobody knows about that I just let the cat out of the bag. And uh, isn't that awesome, Dan? That feels good, doesn't it? To talk about the app, it's glorious. You guys, we've been working on this app for two years, COVID, all of COVID, two years. And it's about ready to be uncovered. And it's a glorious thing that you'll be able to open the Scorpion app. You'll be select any one of those 125 options and you'll be able to put it in your stick builder, builder stick. Look at that. Oh, that's handsome. Oh, dude, right on cue. And uh, it's available for iOS and Android. No other stick company has something like this. I think both of us are more proud about this than we could possibly explain to you guys. Unbelievable. Uh, This is a shameless promotion that I'm doing right now all of a sudden. (laughs) I don't care. I don't care. Uh, You guys, it's great. And uh, we've made something just as awesome as the sticks themselves. And uh, it's it's for nothing but your benefit. Yeah, no, I, I think that's how that's again some of that differentiating right is is doing things that may be done in a certain other space and taking that idea and say, well, this is what's being done over here. Why can't we just apply it to over here? That's nobody else is doing and kind of you know I guess I think they, they you know, sometimes they call that little bit of disruptive technology, right? How Uber and Airbnb has really turned everything upside down in the, the way we traditionally understand uh, taxis and, and, and lodging. And it's, it's stuck down. That's what people are used to. I mean, I think, think back prior to Uber and, you know, and it's just somebody had this idea and said, well, let's do this. And then again, starts out that nobody kind of is 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 into it but as it takes off and how much easy it is you got an app you, everyone is it's an app now right that's i said oh there's an app for that right that's yeah an app for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so doug you were kind of talking a little bit there about uh artists in and so forth and it it seems like you know 
you guys are, or as, as you kind of already mentioned and, and, and touched upon was how supportive you guys are of your artists and, you know, your customers and whether they're a signature artist or feature, et cetera. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, you talk a little bit about how, you know, once you are, I, I guess the differentiation of your signature artist versus whatever, um, you know, kind of, and some of that and some of that. Yeah, dude. Uh, so, you know, when Dan and I kind of partnered up, we talked about this and how are we going to approach uh, the the famed signature endorsement, right? The artist endorsement is the is the thing. That's what everybody seems to do. That's the business model of the old companies and the legacy brands. Uh, it's the business model going up. You know, we all understand that an endorsement is, you know, we're, we're endorsing you, there's promotion, maybe a discount on product. And in return, you do shout outs and there's exclusivity agreements and there's, you know, a number of posts now, like how many times you got a post and there's all this stuff that I believe that the model has become drunk and, and drowning in my, and drowning in, in my opinion. Uh, so we decided to kind of cut the fat and strip, and, and strip it down to look, if you want a, a, an artist endorsement with us, you know, we kind of have what we call an open platform where artists can come and go, man. And they're going to come and go anyways. They're, it's loyalty from them to a product is based on the product quality first, second, customer service, third, because they don't want to have to bounce around between brands all the time. But guess what? I don't know. I have musician friends all over the planet and they, one guy is tone hound. He's a guitar player and he'll, he's been bouncing around. He just now found his tone. It's been 20 years. And wow. he's endlessly searched for the perfect tone and he's happy with what he has now. And I think drummers are the same, man, especially with uh, how many sick companies there are, what types of woods there are, how many options can you get it in, you know, uh, the brand alone and what, what the, what the branding of the company is, you know, we are a very small, obviously musicians and veterans and taking chances, taking big risks, putting in a ton of passion and work and, that's our brand. We're a hard edged rock and roll brand. I mean, our, our, a big quality, a big segment of our customers are metal and rock drummers, but we have gospel, we have country, we have, uh, all sorts of drummers, man, all over the, all over the place. Uh, extreme metal is a big thing for us. Um, blast beats and fast tempos. They need a durable stick because they're doing constant rim shots and, and getting in the gravity blasts. And we want, we support that. I don't really do. Uh, so, you know, as far as artist endorsements go, signature artist is the is the closest that we have to a formal endorsement. There's no applications. Uh, you know, generally, we try not to give discounts out right away because it's just, I can't monitor all the artists that we have and who's posting what and who's actually doing what they said they're going to do. Uh, we do have a referral program. Anytime anybody mentions that they were referred by somebody, we keep that in their account and we note it. We note it. I have, we have a tagging system for that kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, we have this affiliate program that we've kind of created that we're gearing up to launch in parallel with the app. And uh, basically our artists can become affiliates where they have their websites and their social medias and their friends that they can link to. And they would create an affiliate account with us where they get, uh, you know, the custom link or graphic posted, embedded on their site. And then anybody that goes to our website through that link, and makes a purchase, the artist would get a percentage of that total order. Uh, it's affiliate marketing, you know, it's nothing yeah. new. Companies have been doing it for a long time, but uh, we think that is a really good application here. And uh, it'll also keep credit for who's actually doing what and uh, what artists deserve the discount. Um, you know, it's a reward. It's not a, it's not a guarantee. Like we got artists who play on the weekends, you know, five, six, eight times a month, and they're bringing in more customers than, the touring guy who's playing big gigs and only playing with the same bands for a month straight, you know, like, I, I mean, uh, full arenas, the whole world. Yeah. You know, you we know. got, we got artists all over the place, um, up, down, and, all around, inside out, different colors, sexes, doesn't matter, man. You know, we, uh, not at all. And we it, try it, to apply it to everybody. Right. You know? And, and I think, yeah, the, the affiliate programs are, you know, obviously being something of a new, newer, uh, idea. I mean, yeah, kind of, but you know, now that things are so <clears> digital <throat> is, um, yeah, again, like uh, just as a reference there, right. You know, I, I have an affiliate, uh, you know, code for club Tiki, right. Somebody goes to their website, buy some stuff, use my, use my code, you know, club, club Tiki 
co.com they go in and buy two four packs and um they get free shipping and a discount off and then i get a little something so it's it's a great way to have somebody who's pushing and helping sell the your product and you give them like you said a little reward a little little piece of it here and i'm sure as much as they want to put into it and make a little bit of uh you know percentage off of it it more or credit good. on sticks right you know, yeah we, we, we yeah. figure at least we can do is save some money on your next order you know that yeah. that would keep the accounting down a little bit yeah and, and every every bit every little bit helps especially for you know yeah. you know, some of the, the you know the local musicians the up-and-comer musicians where yeah gear gear isn't cheap and you know but i i guess so here here's the question right so so if you're if you guys are making really durable sticks good quality stuff then which is great right because nobody wants their shit to break and, and and so forth but if you got good quality stuff i guess how uh how how often are you got return return buyers right if you've got stuff that's not breaking you know well so that's that's kind of the easy part in in the design on what we're doing and and that's kind of why doug had touched back on it earlier where he said the the larger brands aren't going to do that because it's going to affect their bottom line exactly a lot of people individually the individuals won't go through sticks as fast but the collective is what matters Mm. so you know i put out a stick because i'm a drummer and that's what i wanted was more durable sticks and that's apparently what everybody else wants and and yeah it'll be six months sometimes maybe even a year a year and a half before some of the signature artists come back to order yeah we've had Two years. Yesterday, people, Chris Oaken from, it, you know, like crazy, said he hasn't broken a so, suit. <laughs> and it's and it's cool, you know. We we respect the fact that they don't come back as fast, but because they have that kind of an experience with the product, they tell people about it like right. constantly, like just for fun, like in the middle of the day, they'll just be playing drums and be like, "Man, I love these sticks," and then just post it. And we like we didn't have to ask them to do that. Yeah, and. That's a hundred percent of our market is is doing this direct to consumer, uh, and uh, and it's been great for that reason. Right? Are you guys you guys in any type of uh, stores? Or everything is purely through the website. Purely. Yeah, we uh, we have a few mom and pop shops that are friends that that just have a couple of pairs of our stuff. They really wanted to to sell a lot of the rehearsal stuff. We sell out, you know, to those two, but. Uh, we try to keep it directly to the app and, and direct as possible for a few reasons. One, uh, we are not trying to compete with Promark, Vader, Vic Firth, Las Cabo. We're not here to compete with anybody at all. Uh, we're not going to go to the stores and the direct and the NAM booths and do all that stuff. Like you'll see us at NAM, but uh, we're the best direct consumer stick maker that we can be. And this allows us to, to get feedback directly from the customer faster than we could get it from anywhere else. And uh, the fact that, you know, they love the taste of our marshmallows is fantastic. So it just is so, so far been a really good snowball effect for us. And man, I tell you what, I, I can build a great product all I want, but Doug came along and like really set the Elon Musk rocket off into the sky Crazy. with being able to provide the other half of everything else that I needed with this business. Because building a great product is only half the battle. It's selling it and maintaining that sales and the ability to doing that is like the other half. And right, uh, yeah, it's, no, yeah. It sounds like yeah, it sounds obviously like a really great partnership that you know again you, you guys found each other to complement in in your in you know each side of the to help you know in the business side of things and uh, and so on. So so all right. So obviously Dan, you're you're the you're the drummer, Doug. I know you listed that you got, uh, you know, uh, a setup also, but you're your bassist in a band. So, um, so I guess, Doug. I mean, I see it. I do see something in the background there. I see some stuff on the wall. I do see. You know, it looks yeah. like a, it looks like a kit over there. And so, are you uh, you dabble on both sides? You drum and bass, or what's what's the story uh, there? Uh, well, so after the Navy, you know, I was in a band in the Navy, man, here in San Diego, and I just fell in love with being rock and roll. So I kind of got out to pursue that dream, man. I figured it was my time to get mine and, and try to, if I was going to do it, I had to do it while I was young, you know, and, uh, 
dude yeah man i just went to school for audio engineering and mixing and fell in love with that side of it so i kind of i kind of understand a lot most of the instruments across the board man like what their purposes are and how to use them in composition uh you know i like to produce and mix and, and record bands it's one of my favorite things to do and uh i play bass in a metal band you know and uh I figured if I own a drum set company along with another drummer, I should probably learn the drums. And to be honest with you, I, I, I bought my first drum kit last Friday, and it took me 40 years to do it. And it, Growing up as a child, I wanted to be a drummer. My dad was a drummer in, uh, after the Vietnam War and uh, for a few years, you know, when he was in the Navy and stuff, too. And, uh, man, he was always banging on the kitchen table, and my mom was yelling at him. This is glass tabletop, you know, and he's like, <laughs> just like doing his thing and uh i was like dude i want to be a drummer it's so fun they're loud obnoxious big i'm a big loud obnoxious dude as you guys probably know and like you know it's a perfect instrument for me so i'm a big dude you know six and a half feet tall and finding a drum kit for that is a little tricky and mom never wanted to buy me one when i was a kid and i just never got around to it the drums are too everything they're too much they're yeah. too big they're too loud you know they're, they're one of my favorite instruments to be honest with you and uh uh, and you know, when the drums are playing, nobody else can be heard. It's a glorious thing. Uh, right, when, and the, when, the, when the power when the power goes out, the drums, you, yeah, that's the only that's thing. That gets to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you go to a concert, right, where like ten thousand festival, and all of a sudden it's like, Pew! and then like all you hear is the drums, and that's it. Ding, like, ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> here's my here's yeah, the bass here, goes away. The thump, here's, here's my opportunity. Here's my opportunity. <laughs> so so uh, you know I had a. We had a new drummer in the band here a few months ago. His name's Danny Schreiber. Great dude. Solid drummer, solid artist. And, uh, you know, the shop's down here, so he's coming down in a few weeks. And uh, I figured, you know, we should probably get that guy a drum kit down here because he lives in Washington. So we figured I'd get him something kind of close. Uh, and I got a six-piece, six-ply maple Yamaha. Wow. And it's beautiful. It is, yeah, it's it really is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I walked in and I said, yes. <laughs> it's a that it's one. a beautiful Yamaha red that they put over. It's like a transparent it's red that they put over set. everything. It was it's great. It's a beautiful set. So what <laughs> is, what what did what did you call it? Did you call that chocolate love? What was what it's was called, that? It's called the, the finish on it is called chocolate satin. And I have to agree that it's an appropriate finish name for my drum <laughs> kit. And uh and, uh, you know, it just, I hit the toms on it and the heads. I tested it out a little bit when I was there. And, man, it was tuned up. Remo heads, brand new. Ooh. And I was like, ah, oh, I can't say no to this. Yeah. <laughs> so but I we got a shop kit in San Diego now. Cool. So I, 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 I assume he uses Scorpion drumsticks, right? Of yeah. course. Yeah, you're, I was doing you're my drum. rudiments the other day. <laughs> I was practicing my rudiments on the drum pad after I get done working for a half hour, and I used a, a 3A ball natural, 16. Uh, I really liked it, and uh, I think I'm going to try the 5B ball next. There's something about the ball tip, man. It's yeah. It's got some smack to it. It's got a little bounce. I like it. So what, now, what what about your, your, your drummer, uh, Dan? I have a lot of Dans in my life. Uh, yeah. Dan, my business partner, and then Dan, my drummer. Yeah, and then I have a neighbor. His name's Dan, too. <laughs> And, and they're constantly getting them confused. It's amazing. Hi, this is my uh, bro this is my brother Dan and my other brother Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're all brothers to me. Right. You know? uh, so uh, Danny's got a uh, what does Danny have? He's got a Tom Star Classic, uh, a natural wood grain finish, and it's a five piece. And he's got a twelve symbol setup with all wow. my own like high end stuff. Dude, he's got like a ton of symbols, and he plays every single one of them. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, dude, and then Dan's got that monster Mapex. Dan's kid's beautiful too. Dude. He's, uh, <laughs> he, like wraps up around it, you know. The other Dan, he, uh, it it does. Uh, <laughs> it does. It wraps all the way around. Oh, that's that's crazy. So oh, you got the purple kicks, and you got those big fat floor toms, yeah. and all the hi hat stuff. Mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. He's got it. Yeah, that, that's again the the type of drums. The type of drums it's got to match the the sticks, right? So. Uh, especially with a big big kit and double bass and, and so forth so um so i know i know we've kind of a little bit talked about it but um first i'll ask dan is um are you are you doing any music or, or you know uh projects or or i mean what are you currently involved in drum drum and music wise uh i've got my drum kit set up in the middle of my living room smack dab like right nice. when you walk in my front door nice so <laughs> You know, I play every day. Um, I got a friend, um, Joe Goo, who comes over. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Joe Goo. Uh, plays guitar and we hang out and um, we hang out and play guitar, uh, play music. And it's uh, I'm, I'm not doing anything live right now. Uh, I haven't done anything live in quite a long time because my drum kit's so big and enormous. The last thing I want to do is carry it around. And, and uh, but uh, yeah, cool. I go to plenty of shows, so cool. that, that makes up for it. Yeah, that's <laughs> and um, Doug, we talked a little bit about your band Quar. I say it right. Uh, in Japan, that's how they say it. They go Quar. I'm not. I'm serious. It's, you did it perfectly. That's okay. Exactly so, it. Okay. Good. Yeah, I like it. And I, it, you can say it however you want, man. I don't even care. It's cool. It. I've had people call it all sorts of weird stuff. So I, I'm my my hooked on phonics actually. My speaking spell actually works. So yeah. So. <laughs> Siri does not recognize the spelling properly. I'll tell oh you that. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. So I was so I was listening. So I was you know again I was listening to it just you know I think this morning and a little bit and over the weekend and. I definitely picked up like a, a, you know, like a machine head kind of style, and uh, and I, and I'm I'm you know I I my style is a little bit on that same hard rock, uh, metal, and some of the uh, you know some of the um, obviously my age is uh, some of the '80s type of stuff growing up and so forth. But yeah, definitely oh, yeah. you know heard like a machine head kind of style, um, f- f- you know vibe. And again, coming from a three piece, I think three pieces are very much that a lot of folks don't understand and maybe that are not musicians how hard a three piece is and then for a three i mean there's there's benefits because there's that sonic space that only with only three musicians or three instruments you know the three piece can fill in has the room with, without stepping on top of it and being too much but at mm-hmm. the same time there's that that also means that does take a lot more to really make it sound really good and i, and I think that you guys definitely complement each other in, in that style of music that you guys play and in, in some of the tunes. So in one of the tunes, what I thought was interesting was I'm sure you know what I'm going to ask you, right? Which song I'm going to ask you about. Uh, I have an idea. Okay. So, so how, I guess, how did, how did you, cause I'm going to assume this, right. And hopefully I don't blow and blow anybody's cover, but how did you, how'd you guys kind of set up to get the, the release or the, the, the permissions, et cetera, for shallow ah yeah lady gaga man um did you call oh, it you can, buy, you, can, you can buy licensing okay. from artists okay. and uh you know we just we just pay for the licensing okay. through uh uh what is our thing bmi i think is what we use okay. and uh so uh, so, any, bad, if any, but... so any any lady gaga fans out there go listen to uh again i'm gonna feel like i'm only gonna say it wrong quar, quar. And, and download Shallow. And uh, again, if you're a Lady Gaga fan, you're helping not only her and her meat dress. Uh, you know, she doesn't do that anymore. Uh, She's you know, super weird and crazy. Yeah. But yeah, but you're helping out. Uh, yeah, stuff Doug does. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, and honestly, I don't know if everybody knows, but Lady Gaga's got a big studio there in Chicago. And uh, she's actually a metalhead. Uh, secretly, not mm. even that secretly. She's no, I think I think yeah. she's performed with the Metallica, Metallica you know, a couple Grammys yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's got a thing going with that, yeah. and uh, um, a lot of her songwriters, from what I understand, she's got a big building right with like mm. floors of songwriters and things, and um, most of those guys are metalheads too, because we all know that metalheads are the ones that write all the pop music on the radio. <laughs> it's a true story. That's true. You weren't, you, you weren't supposed to tell anybody that. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> They'll learn it eventually. <laughs> wait, wait, don't, 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 don't spoil the secret that Tom, Tommy, I, I uh, he writes all these ballads for, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not metal at all. Like, they, yeah, 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 you, can't, right. <laughs> you can't expose their, their thing, you know. Yeah. All right, so I, I won't put you guys. I won't. I won't put you on on this question in the hot seat. But again, I, I probably would have been fun to kind of ask you guys. Like, all right, you know, who's 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 between the two of you? Who who's uh who's winning in a you know drum battle here? Who Dan or me? Dan yeah, both- for sure. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just, I'm just. I can do some boom chuck. I got some boom bap. I can do some of that. I can do some small blast beats. You know, on the beat, like I can do that. But like. You know, playing full songs. If I put headphones on, I can play a song. Mm. But if you take the headphones off and you say play like a three and a half minute song by just the drums alone, I'm completely lost. Right. I don't know. You know, it's a lot. There's a lot going on back there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
you know all right that's 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 why you got to follow that's why you got to follow him because he's he's the drummer right and you're you know you guys got i, I right? learned yeah. a lot from drumstick <laughs> making alone you know yeah. like i know i know <laughs> so you'll see right. you guys gonna watch the come up i'm like i'm gonna do a before and after video and there's gonna be a year of difference and <laughs> we're gonna see how much a year if i can play the drums now and then we'll do it again in a year yeah, no, I, I, I <laughs> you can connect with some of those that are, uh, you know, part of the, yeah. the part of the alums here who, uh, you know, do a lot of, you know, lessons online and teach and, and so forth. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe Definitely maybe, a lot of those guys. Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we can get Dor Dorothea uh, back on here and, uh, and get a chance to talk with her. So, uh, and uh, yeah, to totally blown away when she was on Jimmy Fallon the other night. And she, you know, I mean, I know it was a little bit of a setup, but, you know, dr <laughs> drum battle. Drum battle with um, you know, Quest Love, but yeah, but she's she's awesome. she's she's awesome. And yeah, that was great. I did see that. Yeah, she's she's got she's got crazy chops, and you know, and again, she's become like the social media sensation. It's like, but super nice lady. So uh, yeah, the drum there we go. So you you heard heard it here. So there's there's gonna be a drum battle here at the uh, the Scorpion Percussion headquarters there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So. Here we go. So this is uh, we're, we're gearing up here for this uh, rapid fire segment because I know you guys listen to the podcast and you know what's coming up here on the segment in four beats or less. This is uh, you know some of these are ones that you kind of are you know just come to oh, mind. Don't, don't over yeah there you, <laughs> there you go. I gotta know man. That's you right. Know, like, four beats can be super fast or like super slow. You got it. That's it. A lot of a lot of drummers actually ask that. They're like, well. It depends on what the tempo is because four beats could be take a lot longer than you know, depending on the tempo. But I'm a, so. I'm a drummer from the ways down. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. <laughs> oh, all right then. <laughs> we are definitely we are def we are definitely now checking the explicit box on this one. <laughs> so <laughs> long and thin. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! So yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna. Have to, it, this is a. This ain't gonna turn into one of those. Uh, uh, only fan. Only drummers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna do some, but I'll try to keep it professional. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, <laughs> you and I both, man, I had to throttle it back a few times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, in four beats or less, here we go. And you guys can either work together on these questions, or uh, you know, uh, give give your own uh, answers to it. So, here we go. So, in Let's get to our segment here. So, all right. So, in four beats or four beats or less, who's on your Mount Rushmore of drummers? Mm. Mm. Danny Carey, Tommy Lee, Chris Sadler. Yes, Chris Sadler. Mm. And uh, uh, who's, who's the guy? That's, uh, what's his nuts? Um, Roy um, Mayorga, I think is his last name. Yeah, no, that's a good one because four. I always think about three, but never well, four. Well, hey, hey, you know, look, I have asked a drummer has Eric asked more. Eric, so okay, so I like I, Brand. Uh, what's his name? Daler, Brand Daler, Mossadon's drummer. So you're so somebody asked, well, how how many do I get? And they're like, well, I said, it, it is your Mount Rushmore. They're like, oh, so that means I can do more than four. I go, I said, it's your Mount Rushmore. It doesn't have to be. I didn't say only four. But anyway, so now if you're going to have to big, find a bigger mountain again, if you, it's more than four, but. Uh... <laughs> so, all right. So you, so you got your, so you got your drummer. So you said, uh, Tommy Lee, you said Chris Adler, Danny Carey. Danny Carey. And then who was the last one? Eric Moore. Eric Moore. Okay. Eric Moore's dope. Yeah. Okay. That guy. Right. That guy's. That guy's ability to to butter his his kit down is just disgusting. It's just. <laughs> shout out to that guy. There you go. All right. He just butters that bread. It's unbelievable. All right. So in four beats or less, and I guess this kind of may lead into or follow in up from the previous question. Who's the best metal drummer? Joey Jordanson. Alive or dead? Uh, it could be either. All time? 
uh, yeah, because I because I, I, I know a lot of folks would would probably uh, even say uh, yeah the buddy buddy Rich and all that yeah. Joey Jordan says pretty pretty up there for me. It's been a rough few years yeah. for drummers, right? Yeah, yeah I'd say so. Drummer, yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. Hawkins. Yep. Rest in peace. Rest. I, I, I've uh, kind, I've kind of coined uh, Doug a, a, a term for for that is that now now any time a drummer dies and it's like I said no 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 joking I mean well I guess joking aside or however you want to call it is you know rest in percussion right you know R.I.P.s or for drummers there so percussion yeah yeah, yeah I like it yeah. That's right so uh, so you so you got one Dan hmm. you're gonna deviate from uh, the, the 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 ones on the mountain or yeah, I, I don't, I get, I see the thing is, is that I deal with so many of these guys that it's like, like your it's really like hard. Like to, pick, picking your children, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's how, that's a lot of how it feels because I work with so many of these, these guys that I have seen them put out techniques and abilities that have surpassed some of the guys that I've watched growing up. Mm hmm like so far beyond that that i truly do idolize some of the guys that we currently work with right now john longstreth uh, yeah dude cool. Paradis. yeah john longstreth kevin paradis guys like that are just like the top of my list guys in terms of uh metal drummers they just right. absolutely blow my mind i concur with that statement okay all right you could you could just say have you, you ever watched john and those guys play before man you should go watch some of their videos they're, they're mind-blowing dude yeah just what they're doing with their bodies insane. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you, the, the Usain Bolt, the, the, you know, the guys that are professional athletes that really take their job like super serious, like real professional athletes. These guys have truly spent the time to dedicating themselves to doing drumming in that same fashion, but for extreme metal uh, and not just like, I want to be cool and a scene guy or like part of, part of just the extreme scene they're just really hammering down like a technique and the ability that is just unheard of it's like just sounds like a, a, a real the recording sounds exactly like it does live or the okay. live sounds exactly like the recording and, and i think it's just it's yeah, unreal because i think if for the, in the metal world that drummers and we were i was just talking to a, a, a guest just recently here a local drummer you know tw 20 year old kid and He's playing stuff. He's playing rock and metal, and he's talking about some of the you know anime music that's in video games that are some very fast BPMs. And um, and we were talking about metal in general during the the you know the eighties, the the thrash metal kind of thing. Is yeah, there there was a lot of good drummers and musicians. We'll say just stick with drummers during that time. But then there's an evolution. It was almost like the drummers that everyone talks about the buddy riches or you know that further back who are very technical but yet mostly playing jazz that some of that then morphed and grew into the drummers became very technical with chops oh yeah better than those guys that we may have listened to growing up in the 80s and it was more you know some of it maybe more style and so forth uh mm -hmm. but yeah now that you've got some of these guys you know, whether it's like a mike portnoy or um <clears throat> you know uh, enter you know uh, whoever else you know the danny carries as you mentioned with tool i mean they're playing some stuff that it's like different odd time signatures and it's not just four four or different kind of things but they become a lot more like you said chop chop kind of driven but hey i, I would have taken you know dan i know you sounds like you're a modest guy i would have taken you know an answer that if you said if you claimed yourself as the best metal drummer that would have been okay you know it's uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, certainly. Oh, certainly not. But I greatly appreciate that opportunity. <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, we're getting ready here on our next question here. So in, in we're starting to see a little trend here, but all right. In four beats or less, best metal show you've attended? It was Slipknot, hands down. Uh, it, it, for me, it was Slipknot hands down was the best metal show I've ever attended. What what year? It was what just year, what year are you talking about? Uh, so it was still with Jordanson. I seen them at the Aragon Ballroom. I think that's when they came through in like 2012, 2013. And to see 
Oh no, it was United. That was United Center. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And uh, to see a, a band put on a performance that was more like going to the circus, and I don't mean that to be funny because yeah. it's a bunch of guys in yeah. outfits, but it's like to see a production put yeah. together that monumental and that well their light show their sound their choreography as a as a metal band all that kind of stuff was just like bar none so uh i've seen a lot of really good shows in my time but like in terms of production and the best show i've ever seen you know you go to the show you actually want to hear the music not just get smashed by people which is obviously you know uh the other half of it but uh yeah i've never heard a, a sound production better than that as well what about you, Doug? Uh, probably the band that got me into heavy metal, or one of the bands, was uh, Seven Dust oh, okay. in uh, in '99. Oh, okay, that's we're going way. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, dude. Like before Seven Dust, and Seven Dust. Yeah. Uh, I watched a room of people explode when that band started playing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about like spontaneous combustion, kind of like in uh, Spinal it, Tap? Basically, I mean, the <laughs> the women were pinned against the walls of the club, screaming mm. for help. They were getting sucked into the mosh pit. It was like oh. the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life dude it was like help me and i was just like in the middle going what is happening <laughs> like just 200 cap room dude it was beautiful man like i want to do this for a living yeah you know? morgan morgan, morgan rose yeah I've shot yeah, morgan, yeah. yeah seriously that, that guy's so fantastic good. as well yeah all right all right very good very good all right we're coming down to the home stretch here for number four so this is uh this is where you guys are uh I know you, you can just picture yourselves uh, like uh, Tom Hanks here hanging out with Wilson on this island here. So, all right. So if you're stuck on an island, what's the one song you'd have to live with? What's the one song I'd have to Time live with? Time by Pink Floyd. Okay. All right. On the Dark Side of the Moon record. Mm. <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, Tools Right Into. Ooh. Mm, okay and i was thinking about this one too i said if i had to have a song i i and i'd have to come up with my own answer but it i think it would have to be a song that was a pretty long in different dynamics because then again it doesn't get too boring if you had sure, to listen sure. you know if you're if you're working at an Abercrombie and finch and you're over over the speakers playing that same song over and over we've all we've all been there yeah. we've worked at some retail place where they're playing the the regular music that uh you know mm -hmm. on the channel and they're like god how many times i gotta listen to this song in the same day right you know but, hansen's umbop hey oh. man yeah yeah hey what's nothing wrong with umbop <laughs> doug, doug i think i think i think you need your ringtone yeah uh, <laughs> I, man i think you guys there's there's a cover you guys need to throw into the set list <laughs> yeah I, I dude i would umbop. love to see that <laughs> bring that know? back hansen's umbop we're bringing, it. Be bopping around. Yeah, we're bringing Hanson back. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, guys, thanks for being a, a great sports audit. So, you made it through. We've got our shirt. There you go. You guys are now welcome to the alum here, the Drums and Rums alums. Yeah. There you go. There's our tagline where the backbeats meets the spirits. Again, so we'll get that out to you there um afterwards so but yeah no this has definitely uh been fun and learned a lot and again you know this opportunity to talk with a uh, per, you know percussion manufacturer as part of this whole series which again like i said i thought was kind of an interesting uh set of interviews and folks to talk to have on share other folks to get a chance to listen and learn more about some of the you know the independence and uh you know the mom and pops and you know we're you're not getting drowned out by the big chain stores or the big companies or whatever. Hey, there's other things that are out there that are probably a lot better than, you know, and probably for the same price too. And and you're getting a better quality product there. So, um, so I guess in closing guys, you know, uh, what, what do you, what, what do you want folks to listen, listen or check out uh scorpion percussion? Basically here's the shameless plug segment. What do you guys want people who are listening to, uh, check out and do i just want to make one quick statement yep to everybody that's watching this we produce a product that other companies cannot produce based on the quality and the quantity it would ruin their bottom line 
this is why we're direct to customer and this is why you want to work with us because we can provide a product that other companies can't. Secondly, this app that we just made is just fantastic. It is just the, the bees, knees and ankles, maybe even the shoes he's wearing. I don't know, but it's available on iOS and available on Android. It saves your account. That way it is going to be the simplest method of ordering drumsticks you will ever have, ever. Doug? I don't know, man. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, we appreciate your guys' business. And, uh, you know, thanks for the interview, man. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. And, you know, we're looking forward to more growth here and getting the word out uh, about what we do. And and uh, we got some ideas for some events that we're going to be doing. We'll be up at the... Uh, Michigan Metal Fest on August 13th in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, sponsoring that event. And um, we'll be at the uh, Metal Domination Fest there in Chicago in July. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys and we'll bring some product and maybe have a brew and have a drink or a rum or something. And uh, yes, please, come, everybody, please man. come find us. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. So those, those that are listening, uh, you know, definitely check, check out. It's a uh, scorpionpercussion.com you guys are all over also you cover the bases on your social media facebook instagram i think you know youtube channel as well too um your tiktok videos that, yes, we, that we talked about and then yeah the app i think that's great and again uh you know adding in the the, the metronome again if if anything you know if you're you know i know there's a lot of apps out there but it's nice to have all everything all in a little extra piece in there too where like you said there's Nobody out there doing something like this for us for for making you know ordering sticks where it's super simple like like I said there's all joking aside there's an app for that and here you go and it, because we know most people are now living on these phones and rather than the computer and sometimes that experience in the web browser can be very challenging because it's not maybe formatted or such sort but again easy drag you know drop boxes and things like that to make it so simple easy. To uh, yeah, I mean that great. That's great and way to kind of again back to that customer service and uh, trying to make it easier for uh, folks to, you know, that buy. Yeah, we, find we've had, the the number one question we get from everybody is about signature sticks. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the that everybody is interested in getting their own signature stick, and so that app gives anybody and everybody the ability to find out what it would take in order to get their own signature stick. If they have the option to select right on there whether they do or don't want it with a minimum order quantity of 12 pairs only and anybody and everybody can build their own signature stick no matter who you are even if they got pairs man like uh if they want sleeves or not because what we found is a lot of drummers don't care about the sleeves man so we don't want to put them on the pairs and just waste it as a one-time use um you know, and we all seen the club venues on the stages at the end of the show. There's drumstick sleeves laying everywhere and they go in the trash. And, you know, let's just try, let's give them the option whether or not they even want sleeves. So, yeah, our batches are even... consistent enough that the product that Doug and I are putting out, that the batches themselves, when the artist orders a, a, a signature order, that the whole batch is consistent. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they have the option per pair to have sleeves or not, just as he was saying. Yeah, you're, you're right. Is that, I don't know how many times you find that you got a, a, you bought a pair, it's in the sleeve. And then usually it's just, it's, it's waste, yeah. right? It just, yeah. So what's the need to, to, yeah. So no, that's, that's cool. Again, that's, that's, it's, 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 it's these little things as you talked about that most people may not consider or think about, and may not think it's even a big deal, but Hey, at the end of the day, it's, if it's for you, if it's, if it's got no value add, why bother doing it? Right. So, right. Yeah. So no. Yep. And that's one less piece of paper put out there, and one less thing that needs to be recycled. Yeah. So on and so forth. Yeah, you guys, you guys are very environmental friendly there. <laughs> we we, oh, we yeah. generally try to when we can, and uh, and now that we've tackled down the one, the one thing that's the most important, which is the wood supply, uh, it it's pretty generally easy to find uh to be able the ability to recycle everything else that we're working with so far. <laughs> cool. So, all right. Well, well, guys, I definitely appreciate the, uh, you know, coming on and telling, telling, you know, the, the story of court scorpion percussion chatting to you guys about, you know, how you start out, which is great. And again, the, you know, folks to listen to the, 
you know, people with an idea and a passion to go out and start a business and something that they have, they really love and obviously seen through. And I'm sure the last two years with COVID probably was a real challenge. I know we really didn't talk about that, but I think, you know, that's kind of, you know, anyone who's any business or God, you know, the whole world here is who's made through the last two years and is still and is standing on the other side of it. You know, kudos to still, honestly, it, it was probably tough, very tough, but, um, um, but still, yeah, kudos to kind of be able to keep it going. And uh, where I'm sure there's been many times, <clears throat> like f- for me, uh, going through 2020 and trying to figure out this podcast, where I, when I started was, do uh, do I how do I keep this going? Should I keep it going? I got other things going on in my life, and it's and, and near, we're nearly now sure. nearly at 100 episodes now, and um, still keeping this train rolling. And uh, it's like it's it has its challenges, and uh, but head down and uh, kind of keep grinding it out. So. So, uh, Dan, Doug, thank you for coming on the podcast and talking about drums and drumsticks and everything. The app, so definitely, uh, everyone, check out the app. Check out the website. I think I think I think this app is really cool. Uh, so, when you're listening to this, this will be in May. So, the app was already out, um, and, and so forth. And check out the ways you can order your drumsticks and other uh, gear from the guys here. Uh, check out Drums and Rums podcast. Give it a like and follow. Uh, there's other other great episodes that are out there. Again, rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff, because that does matter for the advertisers. And, and it's a way for people to learn more about that this is an interesting podcast that other people may find interesting. So definitely make leave your comments and so forth. And follow us on Instagram and YouTube and all our other social medias to the website, drumsandrums.com. And thank you all. Have a great day. And this is where the backbeats meet spirits. And again, thanks, guys, for coming on there. And uh Glad I got a chance to meet you. So, and thank you so much for the opportunity. You got it. And lastly, and lastly, once again, I want to give a big shout out there to, to, uh, Angela there for, uh, for connecting us and, uh, and, and so forth. So good luck to her and her, uh, her new, her new band that she's in Ex- exigent. I think that's if I say, hopefully yeah. said, right. Yeah. So big shout out to, uh, and An- angel there. So, so, but, uh, all right guys. So I appreciate it. Have, uh, have a great night and thanks all. Cheers, man. You too. This is Paul.